Hey, welcome back, and it is Wednesday night again with 3 and 1 on our midweek. We are in Truth, the, the uh, Decay, and last week we talked about the truth versus our truth. And the Bible's clear, it's about the truth. This Sunday we just talked about uh, Jude chapter 1, obviously, it only has one, but starting at verse 5, and we're going to go through the verses again. A little bit more like than what I did on Sunday, we're going to talk about this because not only are we struggling with truth, but truth comes in disguised. It comes in disguised as godliness, and it's really ungodly. Verse 5. Excuse me. When, so, so I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Now, we could go into all the destroyed and what that means, but what this means is Jesus does not accept those of us who create our own truth and create our, our own faith. Verse 6 says, And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of the authority that, that God gave, that he gave them, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them securely changed, chained in prisons of darkness waiting for the great day of judgment. Remember a long time ago, and we have talked here at 3 and 1, if you're with us, hell wasn't created for us. Hell is not God's choice for us. Hell was created for the angels that disobeyed. It can be our choice if we make it our, our choice. Again, though, it shows that God does not tolerate ungodliness in his godly church. And then Jude goes on, he says, don't forget about Sodom and Gomorrah and all their neighboring towns which were filled with, with immorality and every kind of sexual the, 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 uh, perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning to the eternal fire of God's, of his judgment. Now there was a period in time that the church would have pounded on this and they would have done everything they could to scare the hell out of us. Now we've reached a point that I'm not sure we fear hell at all and we should. Jude is trying to tell people they've wandered away from the message already when Jude was writing this. That tells us where we are now. It says, in the same way that these, that these people claim authority in their dreams, live immoral lives, defy authority, scoff at supernatural things. Do we not do that all the time? Oh, that's, oh, that Holy Spirit thing, that's it. No, God, God is supernatural. It is a supernatural event for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But even Michael, one of the mightiest of angels, it says in verse 9, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. You see, he left the judgment up to God. See, this, see, this, this all was taking place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. But those people scoff at things that they I don't understand. You know, what sorrows await them, it says in verse 11. For they follow in the footsteps of Cain, who killed his brother. See, we don't think that in the church, the church, the church anymore. We have decayed the truth. The truth, is, the, 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 the truth is whatever we want to make it. And yet the Bible is clear. You see, the Bible doesn't change. God doesn't change. We want God to change, but God doesn't change. Actually, I don't want God to change. I'm very happy that God doesn't change. And I think if you're part of us and our ministry, that's going to be a valuable thing to learn, is that God hasn't changed. There is something consistent in our world. There is a promise that has been kept in a world of promises that have been broken. You see, when these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, it says in verse 12, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. You see, they come in and they look nice but you can't see under the water. You can't see what you're gonna hit. They're like shameless sh shepherds who care only for themselves. Folks, is that who we are in the church? Is that who we are in our society? God says our focus has got to be on Jesus. If that happens, we will change the world. That is the message. We cannot, we cannot make up our own truth. 
Stay with us as we finish up Jude in next week and we close out with one of the greatest benedictions at the end of Jude. Hope to see you Sunday or back here on Wednesday. Have a great night.